Okay. I need to get some things set up here. And here we are. Hello, everybody. Um, it's been quite the day for me, so I'm still getting my bearings a bit, but uh, yeah. I apologize for being out last week. I had uh, some family emergencies occur, multiple, all at once. Um, so I am back, but I have done some things in the background since then uh, that I am excited to show and uh, expand upon. Um, so to begin, we'll do a quick review. Um, I am making a alternative supplementary uh, magic system for Pathfinder 2nd Edition called Runecasting, which is all based upon skill checks and being resourceless instead of uh, consuming resources. Um, there's a lot of stuff going in the background of how this was designed and how things work with the uh, original uh, casting system of Pathfinder, but uh, I think I've found a pretty good basis of moving forward. So over the past few sessions of working on this, I have shown off some of the map behind uh, how rune casting works and why it can still be balanced even though it's resourceless. Um, and uh, I've also shown some different bits and pieces of it, including the wizard uh, under the rune casting system where everything, a lot of things about the wizard gets changed and uh, uh, sort of um, these core class features get modified uh, and I also made some new subclasses as well as uh, starting to get together some feats. Um, yeah. Then, of course, the next step past just more general feats for the wizard, there is the topic of synthesis techniques, which are a set of techniques that require a set of two or three rooms to where you have permanent access to these rooms and therefore you can take them. Uh, and yeah, um, these synthesis techniques will be slightly above the power of your typical basic techniques because it requires a feat investment and also requires like these series of requirements. Um, but yeah, so this allows the system to really explode in a sort of variety of techniques and what you can do with it. This is the main reason why I did the rune system in the first place was to come up with this sort of like synthesis system. And yeah, I already have some very basic uh, synthesis techniques written out just to show a few examples. Some of them are perhaps very familiar um in how they uh work they may look like spells that are in the game already such as mist bomb this may look like obscuring mist but a little slightly weaker version of it um and yeah uh we have mist bomb here which requires you to have access permanent access to the cold and combustion uh, basic rooms and what do I mean by permanent access? So, for example, the wizard and eventually the other prepared casters, when I get to them, they gain access to a certain set of basic rooms permanently. However, they oftentimes can temporarily prepare another rune for the day and gain access to that rune's techniques. They cannot use that temporary rune as a uh, substitute to gain access to these synthesis feats, as is normal for um, feats uh, 
for this kind of thing. Like, you can't use Ancient Elves uh, skill swapping to fill in the uh, gaps for skill feeds, for example. So yeah, uh, that is where we are at, I think. Um, yeah. Actually, let me get some water real quick. I will be right back and then we will get started. Okay, and we're back. Hello there. Let's get back. All right. Hello. I was just uh, giving a sort of preface to what this stream is going to be about. Um, I re-explained rune casting a little bit, and uh, yep, and the wizard kind of demonstrating the progress that's been made, and then we're going to be focusing on the meat of the matter, these synthesis techniques, which are uh, com combining the uh, concepts of the various rooms to make very s specific but more powerful techniques. So, um, I went over Mist Balm, which is like a slightly weaker version of Obscuring Mist in some ways. Um, th these are rough drafts, so probably need to have a sentence in here about um, it can be dispersed by a very strong wind. That way uh, those spells that typically counter Obscuring Mist still work against this. But yeah, I can get to that at another point. Next up is Vine Grasp, a very, another very basic uh, technique. It's just a nice little utility um, Piece, as well as being able to uh, deal a little bit of damage on top of maneuvering a target. So, the fact that it's a reflex saving throw helps it a lot. Um, and the fact that people often like saving throw uh, based abilities, um, especially when it has some sort of utility. How do you rule the wind thing? Do you just cover the area done by the wind effect or the whole thing? So if there was like a wall of wind, I think the spell is called, I would just uh, not allow the mist to be in the area that the wall of wind is in. That's probably how I would rule it. And then if there were some effects that can that says I can push, like, fog and stuff around, I would have the mist follow that uh, pattern. If there's like, a strong wind just due to environmental effects, the uh, mist might disturb. Um, I thought about giving Mist Bomb an Evolve. It's just fairly awkward. Uh, the area scaling slowly it. It is okay at first, but then it definitely becomes too big. If it scales up to, say, a 30-foot burst, then you're pretty much always covering the entire battlefield, and not everybody wants to be in the mist. Not everybody wants to be have everyone concealed. The duration is set as a part of, the of how I balance utility and buff techniques within rune casting, so I don't really want to touch duration too much. Outside of that, there isn't Really, that much that can change about Mist Bomb. <laughs> what about the Mistborns? Uh, they can um navigate to uh, Brandon Sanderson's universe and uh, figure it out from there. Brando Sando. But yeah. Uh. I like Fine Grass. It's a nice early level synthesis technique that kind of gets across um, 
what the system is trying to do here, where you start combining damage and fairly strong utility together to make these stronger techniques. And then we move on to like a level four feat, uh, which I'll go over like the feat structure in a moment, where we have Blister, which is a, uh, I might nerf this emanation, I'm, I'm still thinking about it, but for it being three actions, I think 15 foot emanation is fine. Uh, very large area, persistent damage, as well as inflicting a, a, a uh, condition is uh, quite strong. But of course, you're investing three actions. You should get a quite large output out of it. You should get damage. You should get utility through debuffing. And uh, the capability of the technique should be pretty good as well. Uh, do some pull effects make people prone, or am I thinking of something else? That depends. That's highly dependent on the ability. Um, some will say that, like, if you critically succeed on this effect, you push them away and make them prone. That's that's kind of common. But uh, typically, moving somebody and making them prone <clears throat> is pretty strong. Because then you have to spend an action to both get up and then move. So if they don't have any like complicated movement ability um, or they don't have reach, then that becomes a very strong ability in terms of action economy. Okay. So... Um, the nice thing about synthesis techniques, that's going to be a hard word to keep on saying over and over again, is that it is very open. There's I, I don't really have a plan for how many of these I'm going to make. I don't think there really should be a limit. Just like there shouldn't be a limit as to how many spells there are in the game of Pathfinder. Because this, while the basic techniques form a foundation for... Uh, these are the techniques that the system expects to be balanced. The, the synthesis techniques, um, of course, have a similar balancing mechanism to them as well in, to, in regards to like damage and conditions. But they push it a slight step forward. Um, I guess I should also discuss the feed structure. So, as you can see here, Synthesis techniques are feats for casters, which eliminates a couple issues that people often have with casters. One, people find caster feats to be kind of boring, unless if you're playing, say, Bard and Cleric. Uh, the feats for casters tend to be like, oh, uh, I can slightly modify this spell, or... Uh, I can use my um, ability from my subclass, which, and that tends to be the most interesting out of the bunch. Um, and while those are cool and good and it works for sure, there tends to be slight problems with build variety in terms of the feats for casters. You tend to make the most decisions about your spells. But since the runes are more wide in what they cover, and you only choose a very select few of them for your rune caster, the variety is going to come in through the feats and the synthesis techniques that you choose. There will still be the more general feats. For example, the wizard has a sort of um, counteracting feat tree that it's going to have based off of counter tech. Uh, but for the most part, the bulk of rune casting feats are going to be made of the synthesis techniques. And that way you can sort of build your spell casting style. Uh, both your rune selection, your rune advancement, and your synthesis technique choice. And that trifecta will really help build a great deal of individuality in the characters, I think. All right, so uh, there 
are quite a few combinations to go through. Just realizing that I can bold some of this. Okay. Oh, these two. Let's see. So while I'm doing this, how is everyone doing? Or if you have any like requests for uh, some techniques, maybe I can brainstorm some stuff based off of some ideas. Hmm. Let's take a look at the room list. Let's just pick a pair. Yeah, let's just pick a rune pairing. Let's do... Combustion and Time. I'll explain the reason why I'm putting basic in front of these. I think this will be a two action one. This won't be an area, it will be a target. I have a good idea for this. Uh, range. Like 30 feet. Oh yeah, I get you on that. My work was very interesting today to put it uh in simple terms um yeah it's been a wild day there's definitely a lot going on so I am terrible with names, at least that's what my uh, friends tell me, but I'm going to call this something. Alright. This is going to be great. It's probably too long for a technique name, but I don't care. Yeah, something that's that's gonna be the uh, the vibe I'm going for here. But um, if you if one were to look in rune casting, there's actually no technique, no basic technique that uh, grants quickened, and that's what this is going to be. I think. Oh yeah, what's the duration for this? Hmm. This will be a six level feat as well. Since Quicken doesn't really show up until level five, typically. Um How am I gonna do this? Should this be four rounds? <laughs> it's a spicy pepper energy. Yeah. What if I throw a little spin on this? <laughs> the habanero hustle. That's good. Maybe that's what the name of this technique should be. The habanero hustle.
It is interesting how they don't really use, well, I guess that would cause problems for like localization issues, like translations, if you were to like make a spell that is in another language. <laughs> a chili pepper lushy. That is very true. I'm always very impressed when I'm like watching a show with subtitles and the characters make a uh, a joke and the train the the like the, the translators somehow make another pun or joke in the like subtitles cuz I know that's not like what the joke actually was. Uh but they still managed to like throw some humor in there. I always find that very impressive. Because even like the tone of jokes is just totally different across cultures. I mean, even in English, like American humor versus British humor is quite different. You have to always add a, uh, whoops, you always have to have a, um, a duration when you say slowed, right? There's a joke. Is this a zombie that pointed out that the pun they made doesn't... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um... I should just say one round then, right? If I just want it to be for the next turn, one round is good. I shouldn't say like slowed one until the start or end of your next turn. Hello. That's right, when you're affecting yourself. That's right. Uh, this will have a duration. Um, it Well, it will have a kind of permanent duration, but uh, I'm going to add an addendum to this special case as well. Okay. Very good. Yeah, I like this modified haste where you can get like a uh the typical quicken condition. Um of course at a lesser duration. But the uh output of this um you can the target gets a little more uh, autonomy. Does this deserve to be heightenable or evolvable, I should say? Haste chain. Does haste allow you to target multiple creatures eventually? 
think it does, perhaps. Yes, at a very high level. Yep. Oh, seventh level, six creatures. Yeah, you're good. Uh, I guess it's kind of arbitrary most of the time, like how many creatures it is. As long as it's like above five, you're pretty much guaranteeing that you're like hitting your entire party. And if you have a slightly larger than normal party, you're hitting them too. Uh, and then maybe the NPC gets left out if you have a NPC with you. Yeah, I think it is typically 10, which, yeah. I, and I don't really know why. Like, hmm. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure why. Can't think of any, like, concern. Yeah, I'm coming up with nothing as to why it would be like that. But okay. Um, let me think. The 16th level? I mean, 7th level spells is like, what? Fifth is ninth. I think. I'm just reminded of the uh the invincible meme. Yeah, seventeenth would be ninth. I'm just wondering. how spammable this would be. I mean, they would probably use this pretty often. I think it is also a bit awkward to have a something that you get at a at say level 6 and then it doesn't improve or it improves, but it doesn't improve for like 10 levels. It's always slightly weird to me. But I understand why haste is a uh, tricky thing to deal with. I think I'm going to go with um, 15th level. Or you can target... Oh, now the question is, do I stick with legacy? Or do I break the mold? Or do I double break the mold and not set it to 10, but set it to something weird like 8? These are the questions we have to ask. Yeah, like the fact that Fighter gets at level 20 is pretty crazy, which is why I'm considering putting the duration at two rounds. Because then it's like kind of a one for one to where the caster is giving away two actions to grant the target two actions. And then at really high level, maybe this should be like 17th. Really high level, you can target up to uh, 10 gray trees. And the efficiency goes way up. Yeah, I think two rounds is a nice sweet spot for it. It's like equivalent exchange on total actions that you can grant, or they can like really bump up the output of this uh, to get like, say, a lunge out of a fighter instead of a strike um, or a combat grab uh, at the expense, of course, of becoming slow. Yeah. I think that's neat. All right.
So what are the votes on the name of this technique? We all get lost in the heat of the moment, Jimbo. And that's why they go beyond their limits and inflict slowed on themselves. Hmm. Only single action things. And I think if I just say perform an action, uh, then they can't use it for an activity. Yeah, Limit Breaker. Ooh, that's a good name for like a... That has to be in like a... Is that in Psychic? That might be in Psychic in some form. Maybe not. They're strain minds. That's what it was. Nope. Yeah, there is also no as well. You have to make sure you give that exclamation whenever you say it. It could be a nice rune casting technique name. I don't know what it will be. That probably deserves to be... Um... Oh yeah, I was going to explain basic, why it's basic. Um, so, another explanation. Uh, the basic name or adjective attached to these uh, techniques denotes the tier of the rune. There are three tiers, basic, greater, major. And you unlock, as described in the wizard. Uh, oh, it's not described in the wizard yet, but um, if one were to use a bit of intuition, when you get expert uh, spellcasting, that's level 7, and I think master spellcasting is level 15, uh, at those levels, you will unlock... Um, for the rune, for the permanent runes that you have, you unlock greater and then major um, tiers for the runes, and you unlock the uh, greater major techniques for those runes, and then of course, finally, you can unlock the uh, te the synthesis techniques that rely on the greater and major versions of those runes. So basically, post level 7, um, so like feet levels 8 to 14, you will start seeing requirements of like greater combustion and basic time, or maybe just greater combustion and greater time to uh, have those techniques or those synthesis techniques stand out. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that covers it for. Uh, that. Redshift is when you lengthen out a, a, like, light wave, and, uh, it goes down in energy. The longer your wavelength, the lower energy it is. When you compress it, that's blue shifting. I don't know why it's called blue shifting. It should be like violet shifting, since that's the far end of the color spectrum. There's probably a reason why, but astrophysicists are strange creatures. Violet Rush. That might be confusing for people who don't know that kind of information. Um, they'd be like, ah, why is it called that? Ah, Red Line is a fantastic film. And yes, I always stick it to the astrophysicists. No hate against them, but, uh, There, there's a bit of um, a rivalry, I guess. 
a friendly rivalry between astrophysicists and the regular physicists of the world. Yeah, they use red and blue shifting for various... I mean, it's basically application of the Doppler effect. That's all it is. Yeah. And I just... It might be detrimental to use that in the technique, because they look at the name, and they're like, the heat of the moment, oh, that's like, probably has something to do with uh, either speeding things up or something, or doing something very quickly. As opposed to, like, uh, if you call it, like, red shift or blue shift, they're going to be like, oh, what, what does that do? I guess that's... I guess that can be the case, because you've got spells like Schadenfreude, and I don't think that many people know what Schadenfreude means. So it's... Hmm, I'll think about it. And there are fields there, time distortions. Yeah, SCP does some wacky things. Oh, you know what we should do? EOG should have a... um. What is that game called? Uh, SCP, like, Containment. Uh, we should all play that game together. I think it's still free to play. And it is fantastic to play with, like, a group of people that you know. And it'd be so fun. And it'd also be terrifying. It has, oh yeah, that's right, it has to be free to play, because it's using, yeah. But yeah, I, I'd be totally down to do that at some point. Well, that's okay, Quinn, because, uh, like, you can, you can play as the beasties, and you can scare other people instead. So you can you can just be the the scarer instead of the scary. Well, yeah, we we got a little off topic. Uh, back 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 to work, I suppose. All right. Uh. Let's get rid of this stuff. Maybe this will have an area. All right. So if we're looking at the room list, <laughs> I became the knight. I'm Batman. This is blister on my Serrano. I mean, yeah, the, the scared people will be great, especially um, if you're a D squad or whatever <laughs> the prisoners like to call themselves. I always love playing as the prisoners, the escapees, D boys. D-Boys. There's a, a great deal of temptation to say D's nuts. But the opportunity has now passed since I've said it. Okay. So, do we have a vote on which rune combination I should do next? Which two runes should I smack together? I think I've done, I mean, there's no real technical reason as to why there can't be, like, duplicate combinations. Like, there can be multiple cold and combustions. But yeah, so, any uh, thoughts as to which combination should be next? 
Creation destruction. Why did I know that you were going to say that? Predictable. Predictable. Give me a challenge. <laughs> you are the furthest thing from. What is Magicka? I'm curious. I keep on hearing that, like, this stuff that I'm doing has been done before from various people in uh, various manners. So I'm learning a lot of things about, like, obscure games and stuff. A very good game. Maybe I will look it up. Is it a video game or, like, a board game or tabletop? A comedy video game, it's absolutely hilarious. I mean, the concept of combining magic is good, and magic's an old concept. Oh, yeah, I, I meant more so uh, this skill casting system, um, as well as runes and uh, that sort of thing. There was also Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Oblivion uh, allowed you to just, like, make spells. Match guy has a bunch of weird, a uh, bunch of wizard boys that you have four spell type. Combine them. Any three? That's cool. That's very cool. I'll have to check it out at some point. Okay. Noida. That's the um the very complicated and hard roguelite, right? Or is it a roguelike with a K? Uh so our first vote was for creation and destruction. Um I can show the list again. If you have a different opinion. Yeah. It's quite a few runes. And I did consider adding one more. But I'm not sure if it has enough meat to it to justify its existence. And that was gate. It's going to make a gate room. Void and mind. I have not done very many combinations at all. And void and mind, I have definitely not done. So we have a vote for creation destruction, void and mind, which is also another hard one. Uh, yeah, you guys are just going to challenge me tonight, aren't you? You're not going to give me something easy like combustion enhance so I can make my fire sword. Yeah, Void in Mind, would, I have ideas for what it could be. Target forgets what they were doing and loses a turn, so they're stunned. It could be like Paralyze, which would honestly be a better like vibe and description as to what Paralyzed actually does to you. We actually already have a, a, a basic technique for uh, reach, uh, what you're describing with reach and enhance. It's already under reach. Let me find it. That way you can be Luffy. Or no, no, never mind. It's in a uh, flesh. Called Wallop. It's nothing like uh, Luffy's modern day techniques, but the good old fashioned I'm stretchy man, throw fist at some guy. You can do that. Yeah, those are both good options, Quinn. 
I think Mind Blank would be a very good option for like a greater tier or a major tier synthesis technique. It's probably a little because the basic tier ones have to sit at like level six or below. Unless if I gave it incapacitation, which I'm trying to avoid. But Mind Blank will definitely be a synthesis technique somewhere. Just uh probably above level six, which is where I'm designing around. But mental damage sounds good. Let me check. Did I have like mental damage undermined already? Oh my goodness, there's a lot of I've written so much, too much. It just keeps going. Enhance. Luckily, I alphabetized this. I should have probably just done Control F. There we go. You make a spreadsheet checklist. That would be the smart thing to do and easier on me, but. I am uh, never one to make it easy on myself. Oh yeah, I needed to change this damage. So we already have migraine. There is a... There is room to where you make it a buff that you just empty your mind and you gain like a pretty solid status bonus to um like mental effects. But you become like stupefied one. Creation destruction could be that you create material that fills the space and then destroys itself. That is a good idea. All right, let's let's do creation destruction first, and then we'll get to mind and void, and then that will probably, unfortunately, be most of the time that we have tonight. I am quite tired, so I am putting a limit on myself. Uh, let me think. We call it, like, cycle. It's how to remove water. <laughs> how to remove water in Pathfinder Minecraft Edition. So, yeah, I guess, what would the utility of this be? They could go, like, real strange with this. Like... Oh... Platforms? Hmm. Hmm. That is a cool idea. Hmm. Like temporary platforms that go away so people can't chase you. I was thinking something like uh like you take material and 
Hmm, that gets a bit toxic though. Oh, like you capture a piece of material. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, we'll probably start out at like a one foot cube. So five foot cube is a lot of material. Actions probably three because it's weird. What? What? Why is this coming up? Okay. Um. Evolve and treat to change. Uh, but will the range be? Or like, touch. This actually gives me an idea. So just to get the to allow you to peer within the mind of why there's 15 runes instead of uh, 16. Because Aaron, that would have been perfect for like uh all your dichotomies that you've set up with like oh there's a, an opposing rune structure. Or how like counteracting works, like you have cold combustion, destruction, creation, flesh and mind, and so on and so forth. And there's this like lore theme of how there's like this setup of runes of how they're like kind of related to each other, but also there's opposing pairs. Why did you make fifteen? And I was like, hmm. I was gonna make gate be the opposing part of void, and gate was gonna handle all the teleportation stuff, but. Uh, I couldn't come up with, like, enough ideas for Gate, and I feel like Gravity will just handle the space stuff just fine. See, Matter would be too, um, too parallel to creation. It'd be too close in theme. But yeah, back to this. Uh, you... I'm space. You're just trying to upset me. Um, gate. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking is that the concepts covered by gate could easily just be covered by either gravity or a synthesis technique with gravity and time or like gravity void or something like that. So I decided against it and I also made void like extra special the fact that it can counteract any kind of magic. Uh, so you... find ways to... Uh, warp the powers of... Preservation and ruin to old matter in Bingo. Uh, portals are always fun, not necessarily. Gate is more of a space where void is like an anti space, time isn't really space either. Yes, 
Yes, that is correct. Which is why I was tempted. Um, just like, what can you do with gate? You can teleport. That's going to be like the main thing is like translation. And there's only so many ways you can do that. And each rune is supposed to have like three to five basic. You're going to have like one to three greater and then one major technique by themselves. That's not including uh, other stuff. So it becomes a bit difficult. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I really wanted it, but at the end of the day, I, I just couldn't think of enough stuff to fit into the room. Um. Uh, just so people who haven't seen me work on this stuff before enact the technique is um, or enact a technique is the same thing as cast a spell. It's the activity that you use to perform techniques. To, uh... What do we think about this? Then maybe the evolve allows you to hold either more cubes or a bigger cube. Kind of like the idea of someone being able to uh, just delete a 10 foot by 10 foot cube of material. That sounds funny to me. At really high levels, of course, this, that would be like. I don't know, probably 17th level kind of stuff. Um, yeah. I mean, wants to say lets you do less area, but then I feel like it could be used for surgically precise shenanigans. Oh, yeah. Uh, cube of... Non-living... Still material? I guess I can say inanimate. Non living inanimate material. That way you can't just go up to a person or a construct, more importantly, and just be like, ah, bop, there goes your head. Yeah, yeah. I I thought that's where you were going to go. That's when I realized. 
Um, yeah, just just inanimate allows it covers everything. I think. Hmm. Yeah. So should the evolve. Like the scaling of the technique allow you to get a bigger cube, or should it allow you to store more cubes? Truly playing Minecraft. <laughs> I know parties that will make this spell inappropriate. <laughs> uh, I can think of some too. I can also think of some childish things like, got your nose. I'd have to look up Sheepstone. It's been a while since I've looked at that spell. Cube of stone ten feet across or smaller. Okay. Probably the one E version of the spell. The one E versions of spells were very wonky. Uh, should I also specify, I just realized, like, you can just, uh, you can't really do that, as long as I only allow it to be one foot cubes. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll just have it to where they can just grab more one foot cubes. You can do some funny stuff with this. That I would honestly per I would honestly allow. Like um say you can store up to like five cubic feet of it, and you just store five cubic feet of solid steel on your person, and then you just slowly drop it onto a boat and then you sink it. Yeah, that, that might be what I do here. Uh, so like... 11th level. And store up to... Should I make people do math? Should I say you can store X amount of cubes or X cubic feet? Make people do the math. All right. Well, we'll uh, make it simple for the math haters. I know there's some math haters in chat. You can store up to... And... Maybe I need to... Break this down a little bit more. Like seventh, you can store up to ten cubes. Then evolve like thirteenth. And store up to fifty cubes. And then I think that's probably as high I was want as I would want to go. I don't know. Maybe in playtests, people are like, "Give me more cubes." I think that's good. I will say the shenanigans of designing this amazing uh, technique has put us over time as i am very hungry and very tired 
but this was very fun. I enjoyed this. I enjoyed this technique a lot. Thank you for the ideas very much, Gwen and Sean. Yeah, the that's what I was worried about too. Um, by seventh level, I think you have access to a spell that allows you to just go through a wall, like pass wall, or another spell allows you to do that. Uh, plus, like to get enough area to where you can crawl through, I don't even think fifty cubes is enough to get through, like a th a fairly thick wall, but. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think 50 cues is a good limit. It allows for some, like, fun shenanigans that require a lot of planning and preparation, uh, but it's still limited. Yeah. Uh, I think that is where I'm going to wrap things up for today. It's been great, guys. Thanks for watching. And, yeah, uh, I will be back next Thursday. We will just be continuing to add more synthesis techniques. I will probably be working on my own in the background. Uh, I have a very long list of suggested techniques from, like, friends and others as well that they want to see made into the system uh so yeah this list will grow very long very quickly and then hopefully i will make the sorcerer i have i think great ideas for the sorcerer and then playtest time it'll be the first like public playtest for uh rune casting it'll be levels one to seven or one to six probably uh yeah and that'll be a good time so yeah Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.